Graphic equalizers in a high-end system. Good or bad? Well, this question comes from Vladimir in Belgrade, Serbia. Hey, Paul, does a graphic equalizer belong to a true hi-fi system? I'm quite aware of a hi-fi philosophy that you need to minimize the path between the source and the listener. And one can argue that by using an equalizer, you may undo a huge amount of work undertaken over a considerable period of time by the producer of a certain musical piece. But if you use a high-quality EQ unit, can it actually enhance your system, depending on the specifics of your listening environment? Wow, well, that's a good can of worms, and I think we've talked about this before. <laughs> but it's probably worth going over again. The debate about equalizers almost always leans in the direction of purity, of keeping them out of the system. Because when you equalize something, you are trying to change the characteristic of either the equipment that you're using or the music that you're listening to. So one school of thought, which is one that I belong to, equalizers, if used at all, should be used sparingly and only to help poor recordings. Now, if you have a poor recording, if you have an older recording, doesn't have any bass, you know, it's an older one, the top end's rolled off. If you have a good EQ system, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with making an older, poor recording sound better. I think that's a totally legitimate use of an equalizer, knowing full well that you're going to have to suffer a little bit of sonic degradation to do it. Um, some uh, years ago, uh, my old buddy Mark Levinson owned a company called Cello, and it's now owned by another friend of mine, Jim McCullough, Hey, Jim, if you're watching. And Jim, well, I don't think Jim makes the, uh, the audio palette or not. I don't know. But anyway, Mark, Mark Levinson did. And I think Dick Berwin designed it. And it was a, a really high-end graphic equalizer called the audio palette. So you could change the colorations of the music that you listen to. But aside from the fact that it's a royal pain in the ass to have to go adjust frequencies every time you want to listen to something, um, you're always going to have a certain amount of degradation. I do not recommend EQ in any form for the system itself. I am definitely old school. Get the system right in the first place. If you don't have enough bass, fix that with new speakers. Fix that with a subwoofer. Don't start just cranking up the bottom end. We make a product called Sprout. Sprout's one of my favorite products designed by my son, Scott. And Sprout has an EQ built in. You push the front panel volume control and it kicks in a bass boost. Now we did that, which goes against everything I just said, because we know that lower cost systems like you're likely to connect up with Sprout because it's our entry level into high-end audio. A little pair of bookshelves not going to have a whole lot of bass and people are unlikely to want to add a subwoofer to a little speaker because I mean at the end of the day the subwoofer can cost more than the entire system and that probably doesn't make financial sense right. So in that case okay Click it here, we boost the bass, you get good thumpy bass out of it and, and life's good. But for everything else, if we're talking about high-end audio, I think, again, the only real place for EQ is for fixing the recordings themselves. Now, the last thing I'll tell you about that is I've long had in my head a digital equalizer for high-end audio. Now, of course, digital EQ is nothing new. I mean, that's nothing we've invented. But it is it's something that doesn't have the consequence of adding an extra piece in the chain. Because if you're in a digital chain to begin with, then changing the, the digits and the bits, as long as you do it right, there's really no consequence to it. But people have 
vinyl systems and now we're now we're back to adding more stuff to it so someday perhaps we'll we'll reach a point where we could have eq that is remembered for every like you play a cd you set the eq up carefully for that particular track on that cd you hit record and it remembers it so the next time that you play that cd bloop, boom it sounds better because the eq is there for that cut and then the next cut has something different etc so that that's my big brilliant idea <laughs> thanks for the question i'll talk to you tomorrow all right, bye.